Hey, thank you for joining us for the Bible study in the Book of Romans. I'm Pastor Mike White of the Refuge Church. Uh, we just come and study the Word of God and have the Holy Spirit to guide us into the truth that's in His Word. I hope you've had a great day, a beautiful week so far. I hope everything's going good for you. I hope you're enjoying the blessings of God in your life and upon your life. I hope you're speaking good things and uh, uh, believing for good things, anticipating good things uh, for your life and uh, looking forward to and expecting good things in your life. And uh, we just want you to be blessed. And uh, we know how to do that is through the Word of God, how to get you to uh, grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to grow in His Word. The Word is a seed. It's that uh, you have to water it and cultivate it, and uh, it'll grow up and produce fruit. Uh, it's the seed, and it's how we get faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And so we... I uh, love the Word of God. It has transformed our lives, our thinking. When you transform your thinking, it'll transform your life. It, it all depends on how you look at something. You know, uh, you've heard the old analogy of glass is half empty or half full. It, it, it matters what you're focusing on, what you are got your eyes on, what, what you're, lo you're looking at. Uh, and if you look at a glass and it's you see half empty, you're looking at the empty part. Actually, you're looking at nothing. You you say, well, there's nothing there, but there is. There's half of a glass, whatever it may be. Uh, it's there, and it, you still you have that. And so it matters how we look at things, and it matters how we look at the Word of God. And we just take it by faith and we believe what he says and what he has done for us and what the promises he has made us. And we just say they're yes and amen. And uh, the book of Romans, and uh, we've been going through that. We're in chapter five and we got down to about verse uh, 16. And we want to look at a few things here tonight. Uh, and it says, uh, I'm going to read this in the Amplified, if that's okay. The Amplified says, uh, Nor is the free gift at all to be compared to the effect of that one man's sin. Uh, for the sentence following the trespass of one man brought condemnation, whereas the free gift following many transgressions brings justification an act uh, of righteousness. And and so it says the, the, the free gift is not at all to be compared because the free gift is so much greater uh, than the uh, effect of, of the sin. And, and so God had it covered in Christ Jesus. He done... Uh, a, way more exceeding uh, more than uh, what the sin did. And if sin brought condemnation, it brought death, uh, then, the, then the act of righteousness that Jesus did, the act of sacrifice, what he did, what God sent him to do, uh, brought great more, much more abundant, more, uh, justification and life unto us. And so that's why he said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly till it overflows and you, you can enjoy that life. But I, you've got to control your, your thought life and you've got to think and you've got to look like at the glass. You can't just focus on uh, what's not there. You got to focus on what is there. You got to focus on the blessings of God, on what he has done and what he has given us. You got to focus on that. And and that is something that you have control of, I have control of, to, to cause our minds to think on these good things. And now all these things, the thoughts, emotions, and uh, all these circumstances are going to come at us, but we got to have our minds stayed upon him. And that means upon his word, his character, his nature, who he is to us. He's our heavenly father. And we keep our minds stayed upon that. And you have to do that because your mind begins to drift because these thoughts pop up 
uh, all the time. And you just got to bring them back and go, no, no, I think on this. I choose to think on this. And it's your choice what you think on. Nobody can uh, make you. I mean, you can hear things. You got to watch what you hear because you can hear things uh, and it'll cause you to think of that. And so you got to be careful with what you hear. And that's why we want to hear the word of God uh, continuously. Um, in verse 17, he says, For if because of one man's trespass, death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, his unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Uh, he says, for if by one man's repent, death reigned by one. Okay, so it came through one. And so the death did. Uh, he says, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Uh, now notice you have to receive this abundance of grace. Grace is available, but you must receive it. You've got to take it unto yourself. That, that's your part. You've got to be a receiver, and you, you receive this. Uh, and it said that it shall uh, reign in life uh, by Jesus Christ. And reign, that word reign, means, uh, indicates the activity of life and fellowship with Christ in his power, reaching its fullness hereafter. And so we're to reign in life and through the fellowship with Christ and his power. And so it's because of him, what he has done and what he has given us. And you know, he told the disciples, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Ghost. He said, uh, for you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so it's, it's through him that we receive this and through his name, through power in his name, the power that he has given us uh, in his name to use this. And you'd say, well, why would he do that uh, for man? Because he loved us. And you say, why would he use man? That's all he's got to use. And so he uses us. Uh, but we must receive that uh abundance of grace and it's it's everything's by grace uh and of the gift of righteousness and so they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness and so we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and and see it's a lot of it's hard for people because they're always looking at the flesh and what the flesh does what the flesh doesn't do uh, what the mind thinks, what the mind don't think. They're always looking at themselves in that way. But you have to look at yourself in the manner that God looks at us and the way that Jesus made us. And he talks about reigning in life. And, uh, you know, we, we call Jesus, he's the king of kings. And, and, and that's not just, that's not the kings of the kingdoms of this world that we have uh, upon this or earth, or have had. No, he's talking about us, the king of kings. And, and Revelations 1 and, and 5, I believe it is, it says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince, uh, that means ruler, uh, of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so he made us uh, kings and priests uh, upon this earth. He made us kings and priests. In his eyes, we're kings and we're priests. And so this is what uh, Jesus Christ did for us. He's our great high priest. He's our king. Uh, he, he took those roles that were separate upon this earth, a king and a priest, and, and uh, he made them into one. And so uh, he, he is this to us, and so he made us kings and made us priests. And First Peter 2 and 4 says, To whom coming 
as unto a living uh, stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Uh, you also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded or disappointed or put to shame, we could say. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who call, have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. And so Peter says, uh, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And so we're a peculiar people, a peculiar treasure, some say, that because of what God has made us in Christ Jesus. And so we were made this. We were uh, given this because of what Jesus did. We were given uh, a sentence. We were given death because of what Adam did. But in Christ Jesus, we're given uh, all these other good things. And But you have to receive them. And not Jesus, the, 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 the people dis rejected him. They didn't uh, want him. They, they, uh, the Amplified said they, they, they tried and rejected in one part. It said, if I could find that there, where it was at, it said they tried him and, and, and rejected him. But God is the one that done that. God is the one that made him, uh, the word. He, he's the one that sent him. He's the one that done that. And so it didn't matter what the, the people allowed or didn't allow those religious rulers, those Pharisees, those scribes, those people like that, the, the high priest and all them at that time. It didn't matter what they said or didn't say because God had did this. And, and so it doesn't matter what people say or think about you. It's what God says about you. It doesn't matter what other people try to make you be or try to make you feel or anything. It doesn't matter because it's what God says about you. And you know you're putting more stock in what God says about you when you don't let those other things bother you that people say and, and about you and stuff or to you. It doesn't bother you because you know who you are. You know who Jesus Christ made you uh, who he made you to be. He made you to be a king and a priest. And so therefore, kings uh, reign in life and they reign by decree. They, they make decrees and they say things and uh, they command things and that's what happens and, and it, it can't be broken. You can't do away with it, you know, because you're, you're saying something and you're decreeing something. And so that's what you're supposed, we're supposed to do this. Uh, we're supposed to act here upon this, uh, earth. Uh, now we're not saying you go out and get a group of people and, and put them in and, uh, surround them up and make them your subjects. We're not saying that we're saying, uh, in the kingdom, we are, uh, kings and priests in his kingdom that he has given us down here. So we can speak and command things in this spiritual realm and see a manifest in the physical realm. And this is how we're to operate while we're down here until we get to go to be in that heavenly uh, home that, that we have, that kingdom he has uh, made for us. Uh, now, Let's see, I want to read one more verse. Therefore, verse 18, therefore, as by uh, the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men 
under justification of life. And a couple of words we want to go over. Condemnation. Uh, it means to know something against, to know by experience, to think ill of, to pronounce judgment, pass sentence upon, the decision resulting from an investigation. The sentence pronounced with a suggestion of punishment following. Now, it there was no question of of the of the sin. There's no question for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. There's no question about that. And, and so there was an investigation and all of sin to come short of the glory of God. And so this condemnation is uh, is is a real thing. It is a real thing. People feel condemned. But after you come to Christ Jesus, there's no more, therefore there is now no more condemnation to the, that are in Christ Jesus. There is no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And so uh, that's what we believe. We receive that because this is what he has done for us. And we're going to get to the other part in just a minute. But the condemnation is something that people feel a lot because they're basing their relationship with God on their works. And they're basing what they think about themselves on their works. And so you've got to base it upon the Word of God. And so we just uh, believe that there is no more condemnation to us because of what he has done. And so he said, uh, of one the free gift came upon unto came upon all men under justification of life. That word justification is the act of pronouncing uh, righteous. He didn't say the act of working out your righteousness. He said the act of pronouncing righteous, acquittal. So we were guilty, but there was an acquittal. Uh, justification is primarily and gratuitously by faith. And so we believe that we are justified by faith, because of the gift of grace that's been bestowed upon us. And so we talked about uh, which received the abundance. And so when you receive that, you believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made, we might be pronounced the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And my, my question is, maybe your question, why is this so important? It's so important so the devil can't condemn you because when you feel condemned, you, you pull back. You don't draw nigh to God. You, you pull back and you separate yourself because you feel condemnation. You feel condemned. But he said, there is none. There is no more condemnation. There's none in him when you're in him, okay? Uh, because of what he has done. And, and this will cause us uh, to follow after him, to, to live by faith and not by sight, uh, to live by what he says and not how we feel. We don't, we don't feel uh, righteous always. We don't feel holy. We don't feel justified. We feel more condemned than anything. We're able to feel that more than we're able to feel the other but we're supposed to feel the other. We're supposed to say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am justified. I've been acquitted. I'm not condemned anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm who he says I am. And, and you have to receive that. And, and you've got to start looking at the spiritual, the word and the spiritual, other than the fleshly side. You know, you could look back on your day and, well, I missed it here and I missed it there and I missed it here. But yeah, but you got it right here and you may have got it right there, you know. And But we don't hardly look at that. We look at what we miss. We don't look at what we got right. And we would look at what we got right and build upon that. Because if you look at what you got wrong, then you're just going to give up and quit. You know, if you're building something or making something and you, and you do one thing wrong, do you just... You know, if you were baking something, a, a pie or a cake or something, and you messed it up and it didn't turn out right, would you throw it out and never eat again? No, <laughs> you would make it again, wouldn't you? Because that's what you're going to eat. If you were building something, you messed up on a board 
or cut it too short or something, and you'd say, "Well, I just quit. I'm, not, I'm you know, I'm, not, I can't do this." This is, and you just you quit building. You would never have nothing finished, and so we don't do that. We 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 walk and we believe what he said, and uh, uh, we just believe that we are who he says we are, and this causes us to to know that we can go to God. See, the devil wants to separate you so you don't go to God, and so you don't get any help. He wants to separate you from the pack so he can kill, steal, and destroy from you, and so. Uh, God doesn't want that. He would that none would perish, but you have to receive the free gift that he has given you and uh, start walking by faith and just walk it out and say, I believe that I am who he says I am. Um, he said he can't, it came upon all men under justification of life. Uh, you know, when people, you know, think they're bad or something like that, it seems like they just keep getting worse, you know, because that's what they think. Well, I'm bad, and so I just do bad, and this is who I am, so this is just what I do, and they keep getting worse. But if you'll think you're good, then you'll do good, and you'll keep doing better, uh, because this is who God made us to be, uh, his sons and daughters. And so we should be imitators. I believe it's in Ephesians that says, be imitators of God as dear children. So we're supposed to do what he does. And he is good. He's good all the time. And people say, well, we can never attain to his holiness. We can never attain to his righteousness. We can never attain to, uh, to his good works. But we can attain to, to faith, and faith is what pleases him. And we can attain to faith and believe that what Jesus Christ did uh, overcomes everything that we think or we feel about ourselves. And, uh, and so we believe that, and it causes us to do the good works that we were created to do. It causes us to be able to love, to love God and love one another and to uh, do what we're supposed to do. And, and so it, 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 it helps. I'm going to say this. It, 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 it help. This has been on me for a little bit. It, it helps with selfishness. I, I find out, you know, I think, man, I've, I've come a long way uh, of being, uh, from being selfish. But then I turn around and, I, and I, I see or do something and I think, man, that's so selfish of me. And I, you know, and I find out flesh is still there. You know, I find out it's still with me. And so, uh, I, I, sometimes I don't want it to be, but it is. That's how we live down here in this earth suit. That's how, uh, you know, I heard a guy say today, that's why the demons want to possess it because it gives them a place down here to, to live in because this is what you have to have to live is this earth suit. And, uh, and so we, we look at that and, and so I, I don't want to be selfish. I, I, I don't want to be, uh, and sometimes we find out we are in things. And so I go back and I go, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do acts of selfishness. I want to be selfless and, and do because I see that's what he did. I mean, he was selfless at 33. I mean, he was he was like us. He ate, he drank, he had family, he had friends, he had loved ones. He went to uh, weddings, he went to dinners, he uh, went to these parties, he went to get-togethers. I mean, you know, he, he played with the kids. I mean, he enjoyed life. And, and to give that up, at, we would say the prime of his life, 33 and he gave that up for you and I because this is what the Father required. And so he did that for us. And that's the most selfless act that can ever be. And so when we're in him, we should be selfless and, and, and do, you know, do for others. Uh, I'm not saying you know, it's 24-7. You can't, even Jesus pulled away and spent time with the Father to refresh himself, even you know, he got hungry and he got tired and he slept. And, and there was times he'd go back home when he was out ministering. He would go back to Capernaum, go to his house. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, though, 
you've got to agree there's a lot of selfishness in this world in our day and time. A whole bunch. And, and you got to watch it get on you. You know, you say, well, I got to get my piece of the pie. I got to get this. I got to do that. No, you don't. What you need to do is learn who you are in Christ Jesus, how God sees you. You see, a lot of times our faith uh, is lacking in God. Our trust in God is lacking because we don't see ourselves as God sees us who we are. We don't speak a lot of times because we don't see ourselves as God sees us. He sees us as his sons and daughters. He sees us in Christ Jesus. He sees us as kings and priests. That's why we can go to him and uh, approach the throne of grace that we may obtain help because we're a priest. We can go into the Holy of Holies and, and more than once a year. You can go once a day, twice a day, 10 times a day. You can go into the Holy of Holies. You just got to get, you just got to put your focus there. You just got to put your mind, you know, he keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So we just, our focus in our mind, we go there. And what the word of God helps me to do that, praying in tongues helps me to do that, to focus on him. And uh, and when, once we do that, once we do that, then we begin to see ourselves as he sees us. And that is... Uh, selflessness because you're seeing yourself as he sees you and not as you see you. That's that's humility right there saying, I am who he says I am. I, you know, I was who he said I was. I was in Adam. I was a sinner. Uh, I was in condemnation. Uh, you know, how many times when we were in sin, we've done something, we go, I'm not doing that more. I'm not, I, I'm not doing that no more. And you, you did it. You went, you do it again. I mean, we just did because that's who we were. And, uh, now we are who he says we are. Uh, but you got to make the conversion. You got to receive that who you are and begin to walk in that and begin to think like that. And so this is what he wants for us. Uh, we got just a few minutes. Let's go. Uh, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many shall many be made righteous. And so by the disobedience, see, Adam disobeyed God. He didn't listen to, the, to God. He listened to Satan. He did. He obeyed Satan's word and disobeyed God's word. Well, Jesus didn't do what Satan, he said, command these stones be made bread. Man shall not live by wolf bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. And so Jesus didn't do what Satan said, no matter how it would benefit him, no matter how, you know, it, it seemed, you know, it, even biblical cast thyself down. He give his angels charge over thee. And he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so he wouldn't do, but he obeyed God. And so what God said to do, that's what he did. And so we were made righteous because the obedience of one, it came on to us as we were born in Adam, what he did and his sin, what he, we were born in that. We were born again in Christ Jesus and his obedience. So we were born into obedience. And so it should be our new nature to be obedient to the word of God, shouldn't it? That is good right there. I like that, Holy Ghost. We should be obedient because we have been born out of obedience because of what Jesus Christ did. Man, that was awesome right there. And so maybe you need to, like me, need to work on your obedience to the Word of God. I do. I, I won't, I'm not uh, too timid to admit that. I need to work on my obedience to the Word of God. When it says something, I just need to do it. Yeah. Forgive, just forgive. Forget, I forget. Love, I just love and just, you know, walk in health. I just walk in health. I just, uh, I just do that. You know, are things going to come against those things? Yes, there's things going to happen in this world that's going to cause, you know, offense and condemnation and sickness, disease. All these things are going to come, but we don't walk in them. We, we, we walk in who he made us to be. And so that that's who we are. Uh, and, and so 
we just we just believe his word. I mean, that, that, that's what it comes down to, just believing his word. How simple is that? Well, it can be. It can be simple if you'll just receive it. Just just receive it. You know, a lot of people have a t hard time re receiving. Uh, they, they just do. Oh, you know, a lot of times people are like, Oh, no, 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 you don't, no, you don't have to do that for me. Well, no, nobody has to, but they do, you know, and, and people just reject everything. I've said this before. I, I've missed out on a lot of good meals, uh, money, other things. I've missed out because I was trying to be hung. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that for me. Well, sometimes people just want to. They don't have to. Nobody has to do anything. You're not forcing them, but they just want to. And so you were to just take it and receive it. And see, a lot of times that shows where we're at, where we're at with God. If you can't receive from somebody down here, how are you going to receive something so priceless as grace? You're not going to be able to. You know, somebody had you a hundred dollar bill and you go, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. You think that's a whole lot. Well, God's grace is worth a whole bunch more than that. How are you going to receive God's grace? You probably wouldn't. Oh, God, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's I'll be all right. I, you know, I'm a winner either way. Well, no, pull on God's grace. Receive it. That's what he wants. That's why he's a given. That's why he puts it out there. He says, oh, come on, you know, receive this, you know. If, if somebody fixes a big meal, you know, the parable and he fixed a big meal and invited people to come. Oh, they was too busy. So he said, go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. And so he did. And he filled the house, you know. Those people knew how to receive. But the ones that were invited, they, they turned it down. They didn't think much of it. And and so we've got to be like that. We, we've got to be, he's, he, he set a table before us, uh, done all these things for us. But you have to receive it. You know, most of us is I, you know, at the at the at the supper table. You know, when we get there, we're going to have a supper, and it said the Lord's going to, you know, going to serve us. You know, He's going to be there, and a lot of people, no, no, you sit down, you sit down. No, 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 this is what He's going to do, and so we just let Him do that. That's humility right there. That's great. That's being gracious right there. Is receiving what He has for us. And he has so many great things for us. You see, pride, and pride cometh before the fall. And so it's pride that's keeping people from receiving what Jesus did for them. And they're making up all these excuses why they, you know, they can't receive it. But actually, it's just pride in their life. If all they have to do is just believe it, because it was unto all men. It's justification. He made everybody. All you got to do is receive the abundance of grace that he has for you. So what are you needing in your life today? You know, deliverance, healing, salvation. Uh, what is it? You need saving? You, 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 what do you need in your life? Grace is supplied. It. It's already there. What do you got to do? You have to receive what he has for you. And so just just become a good receiver. Just, just be able to receive, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, I know the Bible says more blessed to give than it is to receive, but if you never receive, well, you're going to have to give. You won't. And so you just receive what he has for you and what he's given unto us. Peace, if you need peace, receive the peace. You need comfort, receive the comfort that he has. You need love, you feel it unloved, just receive the love. The love is there. The love of God is there. It's been... Uh, put here by the Holy Ghost, and He's here, and and so love is so you just receive it. You know, say well, everybody don't love me. <laughs> hey, everybody didn't love Jesus either, but He was loved to the Father, and, and so there's somebody that loves you. I know somebody that loves you, uh, and besides Jesus, I'm not going to say, "Oh, Jesus loves you." I'm going to say, "There's somebody here on this earth loves you." I love you. You say, you don't know me, but I love you. You know, I might not like what you do. You might not like what I do, but 
I still love you. And I think you have worth. I think you have worth. I think you have a place uh, here upon this earth. And God has a purpose and a plan for you. God has something for you in this life. So you're special. Nobody like you. And so he has something for you. And, he, and uh, he has something for you so he can do something through you so you can affect other people's lives because he wants you to reign in this life as kings and priests. That's what he said. He wants a relationship with everybody. He just loves everybody and wants a relationship. And that's what we want to do, tell everybody. God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. He's asking you out. He's seen you and he thinks you're lovely and uh, he's got great things in store. And he has unconditional love. He knows where you've been. He knows what you've done. Knows what you've been through. Knows what you thought. Knows what you said, even about him. He still loves you. Still wants a relationship with you. That's how good our God is. That's how loving and kind he is. I love you. I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the people. Enjoy the fellowship uh, with the Father this week. Don't miss out on it.